I'm a former Catholic slash current agnostic and hoping to be a future Catholic. Man, dude, this is complicated. What's your response to Father Michael's explanation of the church's stance? This is Father Michael uh, Schmitz, who I just interviewed on the show today. Uh, who oh, was, I thought he was making a joke about Michael Knowles. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Michael does kind of present himself as the sayer of all things Catholic. Yeah, no, but this is this. I'm pretty sure this is Schmitz, not Knowles. Got because it. He, he, he sound, this sounded like a knowledgeable, intelligent person, so he couldn't be referring to. Oh, Knowles. there we go. But uh, I think he was explaining the Catholic Church's approach to homosexuality, mm -hmm. and. It's interesting because my my approach to this, which is much more libertarian, but is based on similar reasoning to what the church says. And, hmm. and here's our, our difference, okay? The church says quite reasonably, in order to know how to use a thing, you have to know what it's for. So when you talk about using this, your sexuality, you're talking about it, it has two purposes. One is the purpose of procreation, creating children, and the other is binding husband and wife together. That's Aristotelian logic that comes through Thomas Aquinas. Mm -hmm. It seems to me, however, that in Aristotle, there is a principle by which the things, things can be used for a greater good. So for instance, if I'm carrying a computer and somebody attacks me and I hit him over the head with my computer, that even in Aristotle is a fair use of your computer because it, you're, it's being subsumed into the greater good of your safety. Okay, you're obviously not using it for its purpose. I've been in the arts all my life. I know a lot of gay people, you know, a lot of gay people in my life, who I, many of whom I love, many of whom have been my friends. It seems to me that even though the center of human life is a man and a woman coming together to create children, that is at the very center of human life, there is room for life to exist outside of the center. And it seems that if you get rid of all the other sins that destroy people, the promiscuity, the infidelity, the, the hurtfulness and you know, uh, use of force and, and, uh, and betrayal, if you get rid of all of that and you're just left with two people of the same sex who love each other for life, it seems to me that their sexual urge could be subsumed into the greater good, uh, even though you're not using it for procreation. It, it can be subsumed into the greater good of your affection for one another, and I believe that the that this I believe that this is an attitude that the church needs to change, and uh, probably will change over time. It doesn't have to put uh, it doesn't have to make make uh, homosexuality a s homosexual relationships a sacrament as marriage is, because we understand that marriage is at the center of human life and is sa and is sacred in that way. Mm -hmm. But it it should start letting people have the consolation of sexual companionship if they can't have it with the opposite sex, if their natural bent is to have it with their own sex. So right. I, disagree, I disagree with him. I thought he was an eloquent and intelligent spokesman for his point of view.